Right now, I'd like to ask uh, the panelists to honor us with their poetry. And uh, Dr. Muna, would you do? Uh, I'm going to read this poem. Uh, this is in, in, a, in a collection called Poets Against the Killing Field. <clears throat> and in this country, the government is always against heads of states where the economy is not capitalistic and doesn't allow for the capitalists to come in there and take over, right? So they'll take certain people and try to demonize them, you know? And this is called Poem for Hugo Chavez. Because you know that pain is not our motherland, that suffering is not our divine right. That heaven is what we make on earth like houses, love, and bread. Because you come from the heart of the soil and do not sprinkle us with holy water, pie in the sky lies in ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Because you know that your big mouth and your curly hair are African and your brown skin and dark eyes are Indian. Because you don't point to Europe for beauty or salvation. Because you know as Che and Fidel and Maurice Bishop and Roque Dalton and Walter Rodney and Neruda and Allende and Patrice Lumumba that life is what we make with our hands because you know as Jesus that it is not difficult to multiply bread and fish that oil is not the lifeblood of the earth that it should not run through our veins like fear because you are David in the shadow of Goliath and know that the price of freedom is love mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, this is for one of my students, um, great kid, and he's like any teenager, as teenage boys are, they can be annoying, you know, and they move around, move around, all this stuff they gotta do, but when you're able to get a kid to sit down and be still for a minute, that's when you get the good stuff. Hey, Alan, what's the name? I forget, I forget that boy's name, I can't remember his name, anyway, Rashad, yeah, Rashad. This is called Tremor. Boy, baked bean colored boy, the energy just be sprinting through your body, gazelling through your body, and you can't help but to hover, waver, halfway between the bases of common sense and last straw. Boy, you want to be everybody's friend, bad jokes, feet the size of welcome mats, B.O., oily skin, welcome to the molting, boy. So annoying, still learning how to carry this new heft trying to spin silly into swag, oh boy. Can't hold, the votes keep coming, keep still, boy. Soft-eyed, boy, hiding behind herky-jerk, buck up, slap fight, say it with your chest, boy. Girls, undiscovered country, undecipherable tongue, Rosetta, stoneless, boy. sweat choke shirt, hand-me-downs, let me down, easy, lost, boy. Energy, inner alchemy, mistaken for ADD, boy. Just need focal point, boy. Poems to conduit confidence, boy. Don't you know how to mute this tremor to a hum, boy? What they teaching you, boy? What they been feeding you, boy? You grown. You grown? You grown, boy. Thank you. Okay. I wish you all could see the poem. Uh, the poem form is called a mesostic. Right on the mic, Mike. Right on the mic. You all hear me okay? Okay. The form is called a mesostic, and within the poem, there's a, a message that goes straight down the middle of the poem. You can't see it well here, but it's there. And I'll tell you what the message is after I read it, okay? The title is a post-black mesostic. Nat Turner. Amadou Diallo. 
Huey Newton, Emmett Till, Asada Shakur, James Bird, Tulsa Race Riot, Sean Bell, Kelly Williams Bolar, Jenna Six, that one. And the message that goes down the middle, not there yet. Like I mentioned, a lot of my work is more with a, it has to do with more with my personal life. Um, so I use that to feed my work and hope that uh, my, some of my work serves as morality tales for others. Uh, this this um, poem is called Snapshot. It's based on this picture, which you can probably not see very well from where you are, but it's one of the few pictures that I have, although in, in, in the poem I state it's a, the only picture, but it's one of the la few pictures I have of our family together. Um, this is probably shot on Easter Sunday back in around 1977, 78. And the poem is called Snapshot. Staring at the only photograph I have left, Easter, your head wrapped neatly in a paisley scarf, alabaster skin set off by the scarlet of your top, all five nothing of you dwarfing over the three of us, how small we were and how as big as the world you seemed to us back then, holding Jojo's fragile little hand, Jojo in his blue denim overalls with a strap dangling off his shoulder and his Buster Brown hairdo, free hand gripping one link of a chain link, your other arm held hard against Kiki's heart, Kiki with her baby doll dress and her baby doll smile and her white knee highs, and there I am, the little man all grown up at eight or nine or whatever, hair as always waving wildly in the wind, styling in my plaid polyester belted lounge lizard jacket with matching bell bottom bottoms, foot propped up, arms spread like I owned the world, like I knew I did. Uh, all of us there at the base of Lady Liberty, Manhattan, and the now extinct towers, barely bursting through the fog, celebrating not God, not Jesus, not life nor liberty, nor the pursuit of happiness, but love. The love that we could squeeze out of this fucked up family that we shared, that we accepted for better or for worse, or for worse than that, because how can we forget those times? I stare at this, the only photograph I have left, and I imagine the others, the ones I don't have, the ones lost, the ones destroyed, even the ones that never existed, like the picture I never took of you during one of your days for days days, lounging and lost in your euphoria, hiding from problems I didn't, still don't quite understand. Sorry. Um, like the picture I never took of you bruised, battered, and beaten by whatever flavor of the month macho sick monster you were sampling. Like the picture I never took of you the day you cast your first paycheck, leaving the drugs, the drink, and the drunks, and the drama packed away neatly with your past. Or like the picture I never took of you bloated, bleeding, and bleached on that hospital bed, your past unpacking itself to prevent your progress. Your present, your presence, your life briefed down to vital signs and bad mistakes you had already paid for with interest. Staring, as I tend to do quite often, more often than I like to admit, at the only photograph I have left, I am left wanting more. More than these fady, foggy, fucked up fragments that I can't quite feel, these pieces of memory that float around my head, incomplete and inane, that I can't touch, or hold, or strum like a stringless guitar, or cry on. They don't have the power of this picture, this one picture, this one last picture where life was set aside, one Easter Sunday, just so that we can remember that even the fog cannot hide the love captured at the base of Lady Liberty. I had to go, um, I went back to Keats to start this poem, um, his most famous ode on a Grecian urn. And every time I teach it, I'm always appalled by the fact that one of the panels on this beautiful urn is about a rape scene, um, a woman being raped either by men or gods. That's the question that Keats raises. This is the idea of beauty and truth. So the poem is called Abducted from the Keats. He'd left her without breasts, stripped her like a tree, like Ovid's laurel, dumped her in a lake, in a desert, in a ditch, a swan, a trope, 
an open book, a virgin with their meters blank as bone shoved down her throat. Take Marie, 13, a boneyard of her kind at the border. Take Saramba, four, weaponed in the war, a tribe's retaliation, rape as displacement, as humiliation. First night, first right, first of many wives in Salt Lake City. Here's what I'm given. No point throwing stones at glass that always breaks. Forgive infatuation. Forgive the saints who drink you from a skull cup, then repent, come Lent. The kings who feed you pearls in tales of take. Cereal or strangler, what men or gods are these? The poem is called Seven Days in the Life of an American Diva. I'm looking at 3,700 messages saved in the incoming mail. Another 300 in the inbox, papers gathered like soldiers advancing for a takeover, needing to be exiled into the sentinel files that line the walls. The phone gathers dust, seems kind of silly to keep paying the bill. Text covers the walls and floors of my memory, random things that people say. Words not really worth listening to seep through the filters like toxic gas. Tuesday. That was Monday, sorry. Tuesday. We are coming of age with, with post-Y2K technocracy sculpting brave new brains, Mother Nature opening uncharted veins, cultural wars bringing brand new strains. While being served in a McDonald's, a girl who has no face demands if I want to be supersized. Voices aggressively flat as the counter, eyes with no need to reflect. I read the signs, small is out of the question. My brain cannot compute demand. I say yes as if in a trance, demand my right to more than enough. Wednesday. They closed our grocery store again. The convenience store has been boarded up for two years. The gas station level, tanks pulled out of the ground. Across the road, there are signs of the time. Foreclosure now, the new deal. Memory of neighborly faces fade to blank as the cards get stacked against them. Thursday. I'm sleeping late today. Thursday is going to have to fade to gray before I step outside my door. You see, I am dog tired and I've got to make sure that I've got on the right face, that my attitude's in the right place before I dash into the, scra into the hazard scrambled pace of this new millennium race to find a few left of a street still paved with gold. Friday. I've been told it's not really as bad as it seems. And I've got to keep pursuing the dream, but I've seen too many people who glare out of eyes set in minds that do not know their own beauty and think that lies are, and, excuse me, and think that dreams are lies best left deferred, the tasks of an obsolete generation. Saturday. I wait for a rebirth of wonder in children who too soon exchange innocence for knowledge of martyrs whose deaths redefine murder as a modern day household word. Sunday. I am waiting for the second coming of grace, an epiphany, a rebirth of hope, 
in the still eyes of strangers. I am waiting for my wells of sorrow to fill with the alchemy of joy. Thank you. Thank you.